All right, welcome to a new guide on this channel. And this occasion is going to be the media actions. Everything on this guide is in chapters. So if you look at the description or the timeline, you can jump to a section or skip the ones you don't want. Now, if you like this guide, please like and subscribe. And if you have the money and you want to buy me a coffee just to say thanks, you can check the links at the description. Now, this video is going to be about the actions, but we will talk about the quantize, the time and the process, all this that we have right here. On the on a different video I recorded earlier, I covered global pitch velocity and mute you have the cards right there at the top so you can have links there or you can go to the description and you have the link for that video there okay so but this one again we will start right here on quantize now most of the actions that you have right here are going to be shortcuts to the quantize notes this one has you know a lot more options we have a menu but we're gonna we're not gonna start there we're gonna start with the other ones so as you can see the example right here uh, all the different nodes they're not you know right in the pocket they're not right on the, on the grid so what we can do we can go to actions and go to quantize and notice that we have a shortcut right here the letter q we could just press this one and it's gonna quantize the notes right there in the money you know on the grid and it's gonna do it for us if not we can just select all the notes and do q just to quantize and that will just you know quantize the notes i'm gonna go back and the next option is gonna be quantize 50 percent so this is the same as, as quantize but it's not gonna be super aggressive if i you know trigger it again this is still quantizing but you know the effect is just a uh, 50 percent it's a less of a, an effect if i go back remember that you have an alt q so if you can do select and you can do alt and then you can do the q and it's going to quantize 50 percent okay so when you record something let's assume that this is something that you recorded with a midi uh instrument right you just record it like this and uh then you go to the quantize and you quantize it like this and it's going to adjust everything Everything. Now, maybe later you're just going to decide, you know what, this is just not doing it for me. I want to go back to whatever I had from before. But the thing is that maybe you can do an undo. You can go to the uh, edit right here and undo. But the thing is that maybe you did a bunch of things in between. So you cannot really undo. And here lies the problem. So when you record something, a MIDI clip or, you know, note vents, whatever that you record is going to be a uh, story in the Studio One six or studio one is going to remember the original positioning you know the original notes and the values and velocity and everything else so if i uh you know if you quantized it and then you want to go back to whatever you had from before you have a restore timing right here so this is gonna go back and give you what you had from the beginning so you don't need to go you need to go to edit and undo or search the history just to just to go back to the uh original timing Still, if I go to action and I quantize, it's gonna, you know, just quantize everything. Now, maybe you have the, you know, you go the all the way around. Maybe you decide, okay, so this is right. This is what I'm gonna be using use in my production. And I want to save the changes and burn the changes. So to memory, commit to memory. So you, right here, you have an option and it says freeze quantize. So whenever you do this, uh, it's going to uh, commit to memory and it's gonna, make this version the current version. Right now, this is not the current version. The current version is what we do when we restore the timing. This is the current one. But if I quantize and then I go to the uh, freeze quantize, it's going to say, okay, so I'm freezing the changes. So now this is the current value of the notes, the current timing. And if I do restore timing, it will just not do it. Because now this is the original timing. You, so what, what you're doing is pretty much committing uh, the, change, the, the changes to memory. Now, still, if you wanted to and you're close to the undo, you just can, you know, do control set or control C and just undo the changes. But you make sure that this is what you really want, because if you just, you know, commit it to memory and you do a bunch of things, then the, the undo restore timing is not going to be there. So when we quantize, I'm going to go, we go right there into quantize. We quantize everything and all the different node events will, uh, you know, adjust to the grid. And they adjust at the beginning of each, you know, beat right here, right, right there. They adjust to the beginning of the line. Now we have a different option, which is going to be quantize end. And it's completely the opposite. It's still going to be quantizing, but it's going to quantize to the end of the beat. And we can see it right here. On this note, instead of just quantizing there, it's just going to the end 
of line, right? The end of that grid. Now, there's one more thing that is going on when you quantize to the end. So I want you to look at this one, right? This one, it's a little bit over the 50% of this block. So if I quantize to the end, it's going to extend the note. So let me just show you. I'm going to go there, quantize end, and notice that it's just extending this note. Now, if I do it to all, it's just going to be doing that. And notice that this one gets shortened. It's just going to shorten the note, make the note, note short to fit the end. And that's it, you know, these are most of the actions. It was not that hard, just very simple to use and understand. So then we have the quantized notes. And this one is gonna be a little bit different. If I go there, now we have a menu. Just, you know, gets a little bit more complex. But it's actually still, you know, very simple. The only thing is that you have more options. You can do more things. If you want to quantize to the grid, you can select a different grid, different grid values. You can quantize to stride or triplet, quintuplet or septuplet. Depends on, you know, again, what you want to do. And right here at the bottom, it gives you the option to quantize notes to start, which is, you know, the normal quantize or quantize to the end. So if you think about this is, uh, you know, uh, pretty much what we were doing with the other options. So the other ones are just kind of a shortcuts to whatever we can do right here with the quantize notes. Now, still, we have a bunch of options right here, so we can fine tune whatever it is that we are doing. Let's say I want to use the quantize and not the end, so I'm going to be unchecking that one. So the, you have a range, depending on what you want to do, you uh, are going to be quantized by a range. So if it's 7%, which is not a lot, it's just not going to do much, I'm going to be doing quantize. Notice that it's just not super aggressive. It's just not even doing anything. So if I uh, go to quantize notes, I'm going to quantize start, but I'm going to be uh, doing a range of pretty much everything. And it's just going to be organizing pretty much everything. So you can do a swing if that's it's what you want to do. Maybe I don't have the right example to do swing, but you know, I can do it. It's going to give you that swing. Okay, so I have a different example right here just to show you how the, how the range works. So uh, the first note, it's right there and it's offset by a tiny little bit. And as we move forward to each note, we are just get, getting offset uh, by more and more and more. So we are just kind of, uh, you know, offsetting uh, the notes from the grid as we, as we, or from the grid as we go up. So when we quantize, uh, the range is going to decide which ones will fall under the quantization. So I'm going to be going to quantize and I'm going to go to quantize notes. Now, since we are working with 116s, I'm going to still keep it in 116s. I'm going to do no swing and I'm going to keep the quantize note to start. Now, now the range is going to be really important and I want you to look and pay attention right here. Now, what happens if I go down in range, right? Now, if I keep it up, it's going to pretty much quantize everything. Whatever note is closer to the, you know, the next part of the grid, it's going to move it, but it's just, again, it's just quantize, quantizing everything. Let me just go back. I'm going to go to quantize notes and I'm going to go there. And now I'm going to be selecting, you know, slower range, or maybe just less range. So maybe I'm going to start on 25%. If I do something like this and do OK, notice what happens. All of them, all of these nodes are not being quantized, only this one, because it was, you know, very close to the grid right here. What happens if we go up? I'm going to go to quantize nodes. And now, I don't know, let's do uh, 40 just to do something. Let um, me do 40 and okay, so I'm going to go there and see what happens. I'm going to do OK. And now the only thing that is getting quantized is uh, this one's. Now, as we uh, separate from the grid more and more, since the range uh, is not enough to select the other nodes, they're not going to be quantized. And this is, you know, how this works. Let me go to quantize uh, nodes again. And now I'm going to go up on the quantizing. I'm going to be doing something like 60 or 61, something like that. So if I do it, uh, this is going to get quantized for sure. This is going to get quantized for sure. Maybe this one will get quantized. But as we separate more from the grid, it might move this one to here or it might move this one to the next one. And I think it's going to do it with this. So uh, let me just do OK and see what, what happens. There you go. So it's quantizing this because they are closer to the grid. But this one was almost here. So this one is closer to the next part of the grid. So it's not doing this, it's going and doing something like this, All right? So if I go back, we can just really see that. Now, this is completely on what you want to do. If you want to quantize everything to perfection, just go 100%. It's just, you know, it's just going to go and quantize it. 
I'm gonna go back and still remember that you have the options right here at the top. And uh, depends on what you select right here, the quantization might do a different thing. Even if I you know, select the quantize you know, to end. If I do okay, it's just gonna be, you know, a little bit different. So it's just quantizing to whatever you're selecting right here at the top. So yeah, all of this just requires a little bit of experimentation and it takes a while just to get it right. Uh, but yeah, you just you just need to use it. And as you use it more and more, it's going to be easier to target and do whatever it is that you want to do. All right. So I'm going to go back to the previous example and just going to go and do the quantize, right? So, okay. So everything is just quantized to perfection. Now, then you have another option that it's going to be the humanize and you get, you know, uh, a bunch of options right here. You can uh, quant you can quantize or just humanize the velocity or the note start range. And that is that it's just by a tiny little values. So you can go just a little bit more crazy with this, uh, but it will just, you know, add that human, you know, variation to this. This is how it works. And you need to select your starting range, your lower range and your higher range in terms of velocity. If I maybe do it more so we can see more change. And right here is the same thing, but it's going to be with the, nor the note uh, start range. So I'm going to do it more so we it's a little bit more obvious. I'm going to do OK. And this is what it does. It's going to humanize the velocity, but also it's going to kind of randomize the position or the, you know, the starting of the note. And if I just go closer, notice that this one is just a little bit. This one is a lot more. So sometimes it's going to go back. Sometimes it's going to go forwards. So again, all of this is just to add a little bit of human, um, you know, human behavior to the note clips and the note events. Okay, so the first one, it's going to be the length. And this one is pretty simple, but super useful. So you can add, subtract and set all to whatever range you have. You can multiply and then you have the legato overlap and legato and overlap. So for this one, I'm going to need to give you a very specific example. But first, we're going to start right here that we can add uh, by some range. So right now we have uh, 16 notes right here and we have one at the start of each. So since we want to add, if I do something like add and then 16s and I do OK, it's going to take whatever we had since we were, we were working with 16s. It's just going to extend it one 16 notes. Right. So back to length, I'm going to be going here. I'm going to be adding to one 16s. I'm going to be doing that. It's going to add it. We already know this. What happens if we use the other one, this subtract? Well, it's the same idea since with, the, with this one, we add with this one, we subtract. So if I do it, it's going to subtract that. Now, the other one, the other option, let me go here, is going to be the set all two. Now, the set all two is not going to be adding or subtracting because if I add uh, 116 to whatever we had right here, we are going to be going uh, and extending this by one more. But the set all is going to be setting all to whatever we have right here. We are not adding and subtracting. We are just changing uh, the length of, you know, whatever we want, whatever we have right here to something very specific, right? We are just not adding and not subtracting. So uh, if I do like something like this, it's just going to take everything and just, you know, change it to whatever we select. All right. So I'm going to go back to actions and length. So we already know how to add, subtract and set to all. It's just pretty simple. Now, most of the things that you see right here, uh, funny enough, they're not in the manual. Um, you don't have any information. So uh, if you want to go to the manual and find information, there, there's none. So all of the things that I'm just covering right here are things that just I'm just figuring, uh, figuring out. Uh, myself because there is no information on the manual. So if I'm missing something, let me know down in the comments. All right. So uh, the other one is going to be the multiply by. So since we can add and subtract and notice that all, all everything revolves around the same idea, we can add, subtract. Now we can multiply. If I do by 2.10, well, you know, this is an uneven number. So if I do something like that, it's going to multiply it and we can see that it's going over the line right there. Okay, so I have a different example right here just to show you how the other options work, which is going to be the legato overlap and, you know, everything else. And as I, I just planned everything just to, you know, to give you the right example and making just to make sure that you understand what, what we what we do with the different actions. So the first one is going to be the legato. Now, legato, what we'll do, we'll extend the notes until we reach the next one. So if I just uh, leave it there and I'm just going to be doing OK, 
Notice what happens. Whatever we had right here is going to extend until we meet the next one. This one is going to extend until we meet the next one. But this one was a little bit longer already. We are going to be talking about this in a minute. And this one is going to grow until we get to the next one and so on and so on and so on. So this is what the legato will do. And it's something super useful, specifically, especially if you record live and you want a little bit more consistency with the length of the notes. Well, you know, if this is what you want, you can just easily get, in, get it by adjusting the length and doing legato. Then you have another option, which is going to be overlap corrections. So uh, sometimes happens when, especially when you record live, that some of the notes will overlap the next one. Now, this might be a desirable effect, especially if you're using a polyphonic synthesizer, but maybe uh, it's not, right? Just maybe it's not. So let me just first go back to whatever we had before. This one is overlapping. We can clearly see it. So if I go to the length and select the overlap, this is just going to recognize the overlap and it's just going to trim whatever is overlapping the other, you know, on the, on the other one. So again, it's a very useful thing, especially when you track live, you know, you use a MIDI controller or your synthesizer or whatever it is that you use and you're overlapping notes, you can easily fix it just by doing that. Now, the other option, let me just go back to the previous example. The other option is going to be the legato and overlap correction. So this is, you know, both at once are going to be doing OK and it's going to fix the overlap and adjust the length. OK, so I have a very specific example right here. And if I just play it, I have a tiny little synth in the background. It's going to sound like this. Now we have an, uh, another option right here. It's going to be stretch. When we go there, and this is just very simple. If you go to double tempo, it's going to extend this. It's, it's actually going to trim this to make it play double tempo, right? It's going to be faster. If I go to half tempo, it's going to extend uh, the, uh, you know, whatever we have right here to make it play you know, half tempo, you know, you're going to see it right now. If I go to double tempo and I do OK, it's going to take whatever we have right here and just kind of uh, collapse it. So now if I play this back, it's going to be much faster than how it was before because we are just playing it, you know, double tempo. Right. So then the other option and you need to be careful with this one is going to be half tempo because if I'm doing half tempo it's going to extend. And if your clip is too short, you're not going to be able to see the notes. I'm going to do half tempo. So if I do so, everything is going to be slower. Now, right here, you can go right there. You know, you can see when you uh, stand on the breakpoint and you can extend the clip from here or you can extend it uh, right here at the top. It's just completely the same. But now it's going to be, you know, half tempo. If I play back, it's much slower. Right. Let me go back to what we have before. Now, what we can do with the stretch is do double tempo, half tempo, but also we can go to free. Now, if I do one, it's going to be nothing, right? Because you're just doing nothing. Now, if I go to something else, uh, like, I don't know, something um, not super common, let's say, if you wanted, wanted to do it that way, I'm going to be going to, I don't know, 70 something, and it's going to, you know, trim it, it's going to collapse it, but the timings is going to be a little bit off. It's not going to be right in the grid. So it's going to be something, something like that. And all of these tools that we are uh, using right now, especially the time and, uh, you know, especially the process, we're going to talk about this much later, uh, are really uh, cool tools to experiment a little bit with your media clips. OK, so I'm back to the uh, default example that we have from before. Let me adjust this, all this. So, OK, so we have something uh, pretty perfect. Now, the next option is going to be distribute notes. So right now, the notes are distributed uh, equally. So if I run that function, nothing is going to happen. Now, I'm going to be I'm going to need to maybe make some changes. I'm going to do something like this, maybe something like that. OK, I, I have something like this. So maybe I don't want this and I want to distribute the notes, everything that we have right here equally. Now, we could do it to the whole clip or whatever, uh, you know, whenever we select something, we are going to be applying that function to whatever we select. Uh, for now, I'm just going to do to the whole clip. I'm going to be going to distribute notes and it's asking you right from the start an amount. If I do amount 100%, this is going to go pretty hard and distribute everything equally, which is something useful if you have something like this. If you want to distribute equally, it's just going to do it for you. But uh, then you can go into the, uh, you know, in-betweens. 
Right, so I have the same example than before. And again, we know if we distribute the nodes 100%, it's just gonna do what we just did. But what happens if I go to lower amounts, right? How is this gonna be distributed? So if I go to lower amounts, instead of uh, using the 100% and just going right to the grid, is going to do uh, by a tiny little bit. Everything is equally still, you know, equally distributed between the nodes, you know, the different nodes, but notice that they are not right in the pocket, they're not, not right in the grid. So you could, again, use this to add a little bit of variation. And this is like I was uh, telling you before, you can use this as a creative tool. Right, so I have a different example right here that we have a node with this duration, another one with this duration, and another one with this one, which is a little bit longer. That's all. Now, if I go to actions, I'm going to be moving to the next option, which is going to be a split at grid. If I do this, it's going to take whatever we grid we have in the background, uh, we, whatever we are using right here, and it's just going to uh, it's going to split everything. Uh, and just, you know, adjust it to the grid, which is something super useful because maybe you just want to create uh, something that it's not, you know, like this. If I play it, and maybe you want something more like this. And you just you don't need to chop it yourself. You just can split it at the grid and that's it. Now, this also can give you a different thing. I'm going to be selecting just this one. But I'm going to be offsetting the quantize to something, I don't know, whatever, something uh, really weird, right? So I'm going to be selecting this. If I do a splitted grid and I just select this one, it's going to be doing this, but, you know, it's going to do it to this portion and it's going to follow whatever quantize, whatever grid you had in the you have in the back. So again, we could use it, use it as a musical tool more than just, you know, to select and delete or add or subtract. So more, just very creative, right? Now I'm gonna go back to the same quantization that we have, and it's just for now, I'm just gonna be deleting all of this. And okay, so you have a different option right here, which is gonna be merge events. Now notice that if nothing is selected, the only option available is gonna be filled with notes. We're gonna get to this in a minute. So if I have a note that, that's gonna be right there, you know, right here, and another one that is right here, this ones, if I select them, I can go and select merge events. And it's gonna just merge whatever event you select into one single note, right? So pretty simple. You even get a shortcut for this one and it's gonna be the letter G. So if I do the same and I select and I do G, it's just gonna do it for me. All right, so then, Okay, so the next one and the last of the time section is going to be the spot. Now, this one is super cool and useful. Now, the, this uh, spot, let me just go there first, uh, has two main usages. Uh, uses, sorry. Uh, it's going to tell you what you have, where you're standing, or what your clip is doing, or if you select a uh, node event, it's going to tell you where you start where you end and the length of whatever you selected. So in this case, seems this I'm sticking into account the whole thing, the whole clip is just telling me, dude, you're starting uh, right here with this note, then it uh, ends at this point right here, and the length is gonna be just like this. Now, this is really useful, and maybe not with this dumb example, but let's say that you have a clip that is just, you know, way longer, right? Let me just delete all of this. So uh, if you have a longer clip, just like the one I have right here, which is going to be uh, 16, I'm going to maybe just do something like this. So it's just a little bit more useful. So I'm going to be adding a note on the 13 right here and right here, right? So I'm, I'm just I'm just doing something very dull, something very dull. So if I select this and notice that we have a very long clip, we might have a lot of notes right here and a lot of notes right there. When I select this, if I go to spot, it's going to tell me is an F, is a court, you selected three different events and it starts right here at this point, it ends right here and this is the length. So it gives you information of where, where, where are you are standing. This is the first thing that the spot is going to give you. The other thing is that you can offset or move around and change the length of whatever you selected. Right now we are standing on 13. Well, that's the start. Well, I'm going to be going to maybe something, uh, I'm going to be going to 12. So we can just move it one single position. If I do that, it's going to move it to the 12, right? So you can use it to move uh, uh, node events around to uh, run whatever clip you, you have available. 
Now, it gives you information in bars. What you can do, you can do in seconds, if you wanted to, if that's just easier for you, in samples, if that's your thing, and in frames, if you work with videos. Again, this spot is just, it's a nice tool to, to have. I don't usually use it just to move things around, because I can do that manually. Uh, but sometimes uh, when I need to find some information about what am I selecting, you get it here, but you can go also to the spot and just, you know, get more uh, dedicated information for whatever it is that you're selecting. Okay, so let's uh, start with the process. I'm going to be adding a single note right there, right? So super simple. I'm going to be going to actions and then we have the first one, which is going to be extend part to the end. So this works better if you're selecting something. So if you select that one, actually, it's going to work with whatever thing, whatever you have on the clip. But uh, in this case, we just have one note. So if I go there, it's going to extend the note event to whatever length you have on that clip. This is why it's called extend part to end. It doesn't matter if you have more notes, uh, maybe I'm going to be doing something like that. And I'm going to be doing extending to end and it's going to extend everything to the end. Now, let me just go back to a simple example and I'm going to be standing right there. So I have this one and it's a 16 and we have a grid, uh, grid of 16. So the next option is going to be repeat notes to part end. So this one, it will do the same, but it will not extend it. It will just repeat it over and over until we meet the end of the clip. Still, uh, you need to be aware that this going to respect the length. It's just repeating this. It's like us selecting this and pressing the letter D, which is going to be the duplicate. So it's like doing that. So if this note is a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, it's going to be respecting that. So if I if I do it a little bit longer, something like that, and I do repeat note to the end, it's going to be repeating. But notice that it's respecting the length of the original note. OK, so this is my MIDI clip. It makes no sense whatsoever. So now we can go to randomize uh, notes. And right here, there's not much I can I can just teach you. I can just you know, give you a few examples. All of this is gonna uh, is gonna be tied to your experimentation. You can randomize the pitch, you can randomize the velocity, the note length, and you can apply it to a scale or shuffle the notes if you want. Now I'm gonna be doing apply scale, remove it, remove it, uh, remove the velocity and the note length. And I'm just gonna keep the pitch. If I do so, I'm gonna be doing okay. I'm just gonna take whatever you have and just randomize it. Let's do the same. Let's do the same thing. I'm going to be going here. And by default, it's just uh, doing the velocity and the range and the length. I'm going to go to use original pitch on pitches only. So it's going to use the original pitch. But also you can do custom pitch. So right now you can select to select it to custom to, you know, to move around around a uh, range. It's C2 and C4. But maybe, you know what? I'm just going to be doing between C T2 and maybe C sharp. Let me just do something small. I'm going to be doing C2 and G2. Let's see what happens. If I do it, you get it. So you can use this to create, I don't know, bass lines and things like that. All right, so let me just go back to what we have before. I'm going to go back to randomize notes. And you have the range. Also, you have the strength. We already talked about, you know, some of the features that where we have a strength. Now we can randomize the velocity as well and the note length. And this is just going to really make an impact. And you can select the range in terms of, you know, how much you're doing and the strength. But, but I'm going to be applying it to a scale in this case. Since I have a, a scale, a C natural minor, now everything is going to feel a little bit better. So if I do it, right? So now it's just fitting a scale. We have different uh, different length, different times, a little bit more space. And you can use all of this just to create ideas, right? To, to be a bit more creative. That's the plan, right? Okay. Okay, so I have something very simple and you could, you know, this could be the start of something, you know, an idea of yours by using just the randomize. Now there's one thing you need to take into account. If I do something like this, and it's still, you know, do shuffle notes. Uh, and I'm going to remove the length and the velocity for now. But I'm using the original pitch range. If I do OK, nothing will happen, right? 
It's just, you know, randomizing everything else, but, you know, it's just not giving you different pitches. So, uh, I need to go to randomize notes, and you're gonna need to select the custom uh, pitch range for this. And then, and only then, it's just gonna go and do it. Especially if you're using a scale, right? It's gonna be a little bit better if you use a scale. Right. So, let me just go back to the previous example. Okay, so I have a pretty simple example. Now, if I stop it and go to uh, simply thin out notes, this one is going to be really cool because you can uh, simplify whatever it is that you're doing a little bit more with, with the consistency, or you can do it randomly. So we have, you know, again, something super simple. Now I'm going to be simplifying. So if I do an amount of 100%, it's going to delete pretty much everything, right? So maybe 100% is not it's not your guy. So if I go again and do something around, I don't know, 25% is going to start deleting parts of this. So uh, I'm going to be going OK, and it's going to just simplify whatever we have, and it's just going to give us something else. Now, notice that at the beginning of each one, we get a note because we had a note. We get it. It will never remove the ones at the beginning. That's why we have the other one. If I go to the same option, we have the delete notes randomly. So this is not going to keep it so consistent. It's just going to do it randomly. If I do OK, you can see that it's deleting right here and deleting right there. And again, uh, the range uh, really matters, right? Because if I go to 100% or more close to that, it's just going to, you know, be really aggressive. Right. Now, the other one, the other option, it's pretty similar, but it's a lot more controlled. Uh, you get to the grit, so you can adjust to whatever grit you, uh, you know, you want to adjust it, and it's going to do that. So right now we have uh, six, we are using a grid of 16 notes. So if I do half notes, it's going to remove all the notes in between and leave you with just half. These are not half notes, but it's just going to be removing whatever is, uh, you know, in between. So, okay, so that is the thin out notes. Now, uh, remember that all of the actions, not all of the actions, but, you know, especially the randomized notes, uh, thin out notes, these are things that we get just to, uh, you know, just to get a little bit more, get get creative with the, with the MIDI. We can delete, you know, we can add and all that, but we just can get, get creative. That's the main point. For example, we have the fill with notes. I'm going to be going right here, deleting everything so we have an empty clip. If I go to actions, everything is disabled because everything will require a note event or some clip or something, right? But the fill out filled with notes uh, will not because this one will fill your clip with notes. It's not like the randomize where you need to have some notes. This one is going to fill it. And again, I'm not going to go crazy on this one uh, because again, it's uh, just experimentation. You just need to fill around and it's going to say fill the whole part. Maybe you can just fill a loop range. If I select to fill the loop range, it's going to do whatever we have right there. You can fill between selected notes. If you have notes right here, maybe here and here, and you select this part, it's going to fill whatever you have right here. For example, if you have a note right there and right there, and I select it, it's going to fill whatever you have between, have between this and this. All right, but for now, I'm just gonna, I want to fill out with notes. So I'm going to go there. I'm going to be going here. Now, you can select your rhythm, uh, include dot notes, triplets. But you have a wide range of options and uh, the pitch, you know, how it's going to be working. Do you want the scale, uh, the velocity, how it's going to be? So you need to set this up just to create, uh, you know, something random. But this is going to create it for you. So if I do click, it's going to create it for us. If I play it, it sounds like that. Maybe it's a little bit too much, right? So that's why you need to fine tune everything that you have right here. I want to apply a scale. So I'm going to be using 116s, something like this. I'm not going to include the dotted. I'm not going to include the triplets. I'm just going to be doing something simple. And it's going to be between C4 and C2. Well, we can just, uh, you know, make the range a lot smaller. It's going to be just one octave. If I do something like this, it just, you know, it's going to be, uh, it's going to sound a little bit more normal more like an arpeggio. All right. Now, I'm going to keep moving forward. All of this is something that you need to uh, take, grab, and uh, experiment. 
Now, the next uh, one of the options right here we get is convert key uh, switches to sound variations. I'm not going to cover this on this video because uh, it's already pretty long and I need to kind of uh, dive into key switches because maybe you just don't know what it is. So I'm going to be creating a different video just to talk about key switches and all of that. Right, so I have a new example right here and we need to talk about the last uh, the last thing and this one is going to be uh, mirror notes and this one is super cool. So let's say that again, we have this example and we are going from C3 uh, to C4. Super simple. Now, when you mirror, you can mirror vertically or horizontally. Now, you can mirror on the middle, but uh, you can also mirror on the first note. And uh, every two, every, every option that you select right here, it's just gonna give you different results. If I do on the middle, what this will do, since we are doing horizontally, it's just gonna flip whatever data that we have right here. So if I do okay, notice that we have the same thing, but it's just backwards. That's why it's called mirror. So, but still, you know, we can go back and maybe I just want to mirror this section. I'm gonna be going to, again, mirror, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm not changing anything. If I do it, we have something like this. And again, all of this just could be a different variation that you could create. All these are just creative tools, right? Well, let me just go back. So if I go to mirror notes, now what we can do, we can mirror uh, on the first note, which is going to be taking into account the first note. And it's just pretty much going to do the same thing, but it's going to mirror whatever we had after the first note and just Take it down. All right, let's go back. I'm gonna go to a different option and you can say mirror on a custom note. So right now we have C4, this is C4, right? So if I do okay, we get the other, you know, example. Instead of uh, moving everything down, is we are moving everything up because this is the uh, kind of uh, the starting point. All right. Right, so all this again is just part of your experimentation. You need to experiment with this. Uh, let me just go to the uh, example that we have from before. If I do the same, go back and just remove this section and we can do it only, uh, we can remember uh, notes vertically. If I do it, uh, you know, notice it's just pretty much the same example, but now this is gonna be C4 and this is gonna be on C3, right? It's just the same example, but you know, backwards. So you have a, you know, a few ways of doing this. now. This is really cool, especially when you have some kind of a pattern, maybe, maybe a baseline or something like that. And you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do it right now. Um, I'm gonna go to uh, this is the synth. It's a cool synthesizer. Uh, if I go to bass, let me just you know select the bass. If we, if we play it back, maybe not. Okay, well that's fine. Okay, so we could do we could just create a baseline, something simple. We could do something like that. And we can, you know, maybe use the natural minor to do something simple. Let's do something simple. Right? Right. Pretty dull. But now, again, maybe I want to select this and I want to change it around and see how it sounds. I want to mirror on the middle. I'm going to be mirroring maybe I'm gonna be doing the same thing right here I'm gonna go to mirror notes and all this just again can be used in a creative way on a creative way maybe I'm gonna mirror vertically and horizontally and I'm just gonna mirror on the face the first note which is gonna be very simple right I'll just you know flip around I'm gonna be selecting everything mirror notes I'm just gonna mirror all right you know doesn't sound that bad so again uh, you could use all these tools uh, to boost your creativity maybe you create a baseline you don't like it well then maybe you just can go to a scratch pad and try all this you know all the actions that you have available that's why you get them so if you liked all of this and you learned something new remember to like please and subscribe and if you have the money and you want to buy me a coffee just to say thanks you can go to links at the description you have a uh, buttons for you have a link for paypal you have the youtube thanks button and you have patreon maybe you can be a one month patron and buy me a coffee that way that would be cool 
And, uh, and that's it. So see you on the next one.